Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. Chris here. Welcome to another video. I'm going to build another Windows 98 PC, this time with some more authentic parts for the Windows 98 time period, mainly this awesome, great condition Asus P2B motherboard. And we've got already a Pentium 2 400 processor installed in that unit with this cool Cooler Master uh, cooling block on there to keep it nice and nice and cool um yeah this is a great i love this board just in terms of the size of it for for the time period right where you knew you had to install a bunch of cards into the system to do all the things you wanted to do so having so much available right we've got an agp slot for our graphics card which is going to be important to give some good quality graphics and then we've got four pci slots and three isa slots now these ones right here are in a shared position in the in the system so when if you install a pci card in in slot four you can't install an isa card into the isa slot one so it's one or the other um that's okay because i don't actually have a lot of isa slots to install in this isa cards that is to install in this machine um so it's great having that plus we've got three slots for memory so we're going to be able to install a lot of memory on here we've got all of our integrated chips uh, for controllers and then there's quite a few spaces here to install our fans so there's a fan connector already for the CPU here there's another chassis fan connector here and then way at the back at the top here there's a third one here for what's called power fan so I guess you you could have maybe some control for the PSU fan but we could use that either for that or for a rear fan so we're going to be able to get a, a good amount of cooling I think uh, going for this system as we need it. Uh, Memory-wise, speaking of that, I do have I have lots of SD RAM sticks because it's something that I can't really use for building uh, more modern machines. So I've got a triple uh, Infineon 256 megabytes. Now these are all not exact model numbers here, right? There's different part numbers attached to them, but they're all PC133 memory. Um, this board is supposed to be running at PC100, but these should clock down and run okay. We'll have a total of 768 megabytes of RAM in this system. Um, so we will, when we install Windows 98, we're gonna have to install a patch that allows Windows to run properly uh, with more than 512 megabytes of, of memory being addressed. And that'll be important uh, for having this and a video card installed in the system. So memory, very important. Uh, next up, I guess we'll take a look at the video card. So I have uh, three cards that I have uh, picked out. And the reason why I have a couple is just in case one of them isn't working properly, um, I want to be able to um, have an alternative. So there's this Asus uh, V8170 128 megabytes. This is an MX440 uh, NVIDIA card. And then I also have another... Um, card here, which I guess is like an O. This is probably an OEM and came out of like a Dell machine or something. But this is another MX440, um, which I believe is also 128 megabytes, but it's just a, a different package. I thought I would, you know, if I can get the V7180 working or yeah, 8170, sorry, working, um, I'm going to use that because it, it's kind of matching, right? Like it's, you know, the same board. It's, they're both Asus, so it kind of pairs up really nicely. And then should MX440 not be an option, it's not going to work. I've got this R92LE, uh, which is an ATI Radeon 9250. Um, it's also 128 megabytes, and that actually should be a pretty decent video card uh, for the time as well. Now, all these are you know kind of overkill for a Windows 98 machine. They're not exactly aero-specific to when the P2B was out. Um, but I figured, hey, I've got them, you know, I can break a one or two rules. It's my build after all. <laughs> um, next up I'm going to do, uh, would be sound, right? So for sound cards, I've picked out a pair of cards here that I'm going to try using. Um, they're both Sound Blaster Live. Uh, one is a CT4830, which is, from my research, is one of the good cards to install for Windows 98 and DOS, uh, compatibility. I don't have like a ton of different ones available in terms of the, the, the perfect options. Um, and then the other one is this Sound Blaster Live 5.1 Digital, which is an SB0220, which apparently this one is supposed to be an okay card as well. Um, so I'm gonna try the, the 4830 first, and if it doesn't work, then I'm gonna try the, the, tw the 220. Um, and I'm hoping that both of them are gonna be fine, and it won't matter which one I use, but at least I've got the, the option again to choose them. Um, another thing I'm going to consider putting in is the P2B has two USB ports on it, um, but there's no headers for any other USB ports on there as well. So I've got this 
uh, via chipset. Uh, it's a 6212L, which I got the drivers for for Windows 98. I'm going to see if I can maybe install this, which is going to have four more USB ports on the uh, on the outside. And then there's an internal USB port, which I can't really see what I would be using it for internally uh, in the machine, but it's there. Uh, but I figured I would give maybe see if this would work to give me some more USB ports to work with on the system. If it works or not, we'll, we'll try it out. Uh, and then uh, networking wise, I've got a couple of different options. So if if I need to go PCI, I've got both an Intel uh, and a 3Com. So the 3Com is a, a 3C905B, which I know works in Windows 98 and DOS. I've, I've installed a couple of these into machines in the past um, to run Windows 98 and it works perfectly with no issues. And then I've got this Intel card, uh, which may work as well. And I thought that maybe I would have this because I've got the drivers for it and then it's an Intel chipset on the P2B motherboard. So maybe, you know, that would be kind of same driver set type of thing would work okay. The alternative to that is I've got a bunch of ISA uh, network cards as well. So most of these are um, NE2000Ts, which, which from my reading up, um, has a good driver stack that will work for both Windows and DOS. So I've got three of those to work with that might be possible. And then I've got a Realtek and an SMC uh, Ultra Chip, which I've got drivers for both of these as well, um, which may or may not be compatible and work. So they're kind of like alternatives as well. Um, in the case of all of these, there's no ROMs or anything. There's no ROMs on, on the available ROM slots on these. So um, but I'm not planning on doing any advanced networking. It's just to be able to get these to connect to the local network. So I can try maybe doing some FTP stuff to download files instead of using like USB keys and stuff, um, or saving stuff on an SD card, which I'm probably going to use to transfer stuff, uh, from a hard drive perspective. The last thing for networking I'm going to try out is once we've got everything else set up here is I might try to get one of these Wi-Fi adapters to work. So these are all wireless G, uh, gigabyte, a D-Link and a Linksys. And I do have the drivers for all of them as well. So we might try them out. I don't currently have a router that's capable of providing a wireless G connection um, at the moment, but you know, we'll see if we can get this thing up and running at least because that may, you know, might be one additional thing to kind of fill out the load for this. Um, what else do we have? Floppy drive. I've got a pair of uh, IDE optical drives here. A, they're a matching set from Samsung. So there's a DVD-ROM drive and then a CD burner. And I figured, you know, I could put a multi-burner in this, but, uh, you know, a little bit more error-specific uh, might be, you know, the DVD-ROM and CD burner combo. Again, it's probably still a little bit new. DVD-ROMs maybe are not quite, you know, P2B era, but um, it's a matching set. I figured that would kind of work out pretty well. Uh, and then it's all going to go into this case here, this, this case that would have come originally from uh, this company here, MDG, which is uh, like a Canadian clone company. Um, so they would have sold this originally to somebody with something in it, probably a Pentium 4 at the time, but it's a decent sized case. It's in good condition. Um, and I figured that would work out very well. Um, as far as storage is concerned, um, I've got a couple of the IDE 3.5 inch drives that I'm gonna use at least one, maybe even two uh, to do like an OS and like a storage backup and then for transferring files, I've got this SD to IDE converter card, um, which uh, I've, you know kind of can be helpful when you want to transfer stuff over. Like if I can't get the networking operating up and running right away or anything like that, is I can load everything I need to into this SD card, and then I can install this and have it running on the secondary IDE controller instead of the optical drives, and I can transfer over everything I need onto the hard drives that way. So it's kind of like a uh, you know, cheating before you have USB working properly on the system. So that's something that I can, I can obviously uh, make work uh, pretty well. Uh, I don't plan on having the SD card be the main OS for this machine, um, just because, well, I'd say I only have one of those adapters right now, and I've got a ton of IDE hard drives, and especially some lower capacity, like sub 20 gig. I want to start using them in something because they're just sitting around doing nothing right now. So that's you know kind of what the build here is going to look like. And then I do have some other stuff that I want to put with this because I want to make it a real full build. So let's take a look at the rest of the accessories that are going to be you know with it. Okay, so I've got the rest of the stuff up on the table now. We've got this 
mega image uh, H15DP monitor. It's a, I believe a 15 inch CRT monitor. Um, if I remember correctly, it's still in pretty good condition, but there might have been a little bit of uh, there might have been a little bit of uh, color wash on it. So we'll have to take a look and see if it's still working okay. Um, hopefully it is because it's it's a neat looking monitor I thought would pair well uh, with this build. And then, oh, for our human interface, we've got this NEC uh, PS2 keyboard, nice and, nice and clicky, and a nice Microsoft two button ball mouse. And then for sound, we've got these big, well, this guy's heavy because it's got the amp and everything in it, the power supply, uh, these LabTech LCS 1070 speakers. They're a little bit worse for wear uh, as far as yellowing goes and a little bit of dirt on there. Uh, I cleaned them up a little bit and there's some stains on there that haven't come off yet, but overall they're, they're still pretty good and they seem to work okay as well. So yeah, that's going to be the whole setup. I'm really excited about this. So I'm... Um, Next video you see for this stuff here is going to be like a build video uh, where I'm going to put everything into the case um, and uh, we'll get it up and running. Uh, maybe do some testing before we install everything to make sure everything's working okay. And then uh, we'll have a, a, you know, a, a run through running some video games and whatnot on it to see how it runs with the finished product after that. So I uh, hope you're interested in that. I uh, hope you enjoyed taking a look at the stuff I'm going to put into this build and uh, we'll uh, want to tune in for the next one in a couple weeks when I've got that uh, ready to go. As always, I hope you're staying safe and healthy and we will catch you in the next one.